I had a dream to be here, my dream fulfilled. Keep the dream, everybody will be able to fulfill their dreams. 11 Grand Slam titles, a career spanning just over a decade, and a dominance on grass and clay that remains legendary. Bjorn Borg wasn't just another tennis player, he was a phenomenon that shook the tennis world during the wooden racket era. Borg's journey was more than just titles and trophies. It was about shattering expectations, about the resilience of a young boy from Sweden who rose against challenges and carved a legacy so strong it remains untouched. His iconic style and unmatched prowess had audiences worldwide on the edge of their seats, match after match. Join us as we dive deep into the saga of Bjorn Borg, the immortal legend of tennis. Born in the picturesque town of Södertälje in Sweden on June 6, 1956, the legend of Bjorn Borg began far from the grand stadiums and roaring crowds we so often associate him with. Young Bjorn's journey wasn't one paved with gold. His family was of humble means, and the glitz and glamour of international tennis seemed worlds away. His introduction to tennis wasn't through grand stadiums or famous players. It was a simple golden tennis racket. A racket his father secured as a prize from a table tennis tournament. Little did his father know that this gift would not only change young Bjorn's life but also the course of tennis history. By 15, he was already a part of the Swedish Davis Cup team. At 18, he stunned the world by clinching his first Grand Slam title at the French Open. From the humble streets of Södertälje to the grand stages of Wimbledon and Roland Garros, Borg's rise was nothing short of meteoric. Let's break it down by numbers, shall we? 11. That's the staggering number of Grand Slam titles he claimed, among them five consecutive Wimbledon championships from 1976 to 1980. This was a record, untouched until the greats of our current era came along. But wait, there's more. Six victories at the French Open, a feat made even more astonishing as he bagged four of those titles back to back. But Borg was special for more reasons than just winning. He had his own way of playing. His returns were powerful and hard to predict. He had a unique way of swinging his racket using both hands, which left many opponents puzzled. But perhaps what set Borg apart the most was his stamina. His physical endurance was legendary. Long rallies, five set matches, searing heat, nothing could wear him down. Following the path of his remarkable achievements, Borg's journey wasn't just about the wins. It was about the thrilling contests, the kind that kept you at the edge of your seat. Imagine two top athletes, both passionate and both wanting to win. That's what it was like when Borg met his fierce opponents, John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. Every time they clashed, it was like watching a movie with suspense, drama, and a lot of nail-biting moments. Let's take a quick trip back to 1980. At Wimbledon, the biggest stage in tennis, Borg was about to face McEnroe. Both were in top form. The match that unfolded is still talked about. It wasn't just a game, it was a clash of titans. They played for hours, pushing each other to the limit. A tiebreaker that seemed to go on forever with both players refusing to give in. Borg eventually emerged the winner, but that match? It was a win for everyone who got to watch it. From thrilling contests on the tennis court, there was something else about Borg that caught everyone's attention. His cool and composed nature. Imagine being in the midst of a heated match, with the whole world watching, and still staying as calm as a quiet morning. That was Borg for you. They called him the Iceman. Why? Because even in the toughest moments, Borg rarely showed emotion. It was as if he was in a world of his own, focused solely on the game. He didn't shout. He didn't lose his cool. He played each point with a calm mind, no matter how intense the situation. This wasn't just about being calm, though. It was a powerful tool. His opponents often found it tough to read him. Was he tired? Was he worried? They never knew. This gave Borg an edge. While his rivals were trying to figure him out, he was busy winning points. From the calm, icy facade of Borg's face, you'd never guess the tempests he battled. This legend, as we know, met challenges head-on from the get-go. After earning the reputation of the Iceman, Borg faced the fiery heat of the professional circuit. Early in his career, the transition was challenging. Then there's the physical toll. Borg's topspin-heavy game led to a unique stress on his body. By age 25, Borg had already played 27 Grand Slam tournaments and won 11 of them. But this came with a price. 
The grind of the circuit and his intense playing style led to multiple injuries. With success, however, came weighty expectations. By the end of 1980, Borg had a nearly 90% winning percentage in Grand Slam matches. The world didn't just hope he would win, they expected it. But expectations bring pressure, and Borg was not immune. And despite his prowess on most courts, the hard courts of the U.S. Open were a challenge. In his career, Borg reached the U.S. Open final four times, but never clinched the title. This was the one Grand Slam that he couldn't achieve. Off the court, life was equally challenging. The world saw him win Wimbledon five times consecutively, but few saw the never-ending travel that he did, away from home, juggling training sessions, media attention, and the physical and mental toll of constant travel. After facing so many challenges, both on and off the court, the tennis world was shaken with Borg's decision. At the age of 26, a time when most tennis players hit their prime, Borg chose to hang up his racket. From a record of the most consecutive wins in tennis history, to owning 11 Grand Slam titles by 1981, Borg's brilliance was unparalleled. But as numbers soared, something dimmed inside. After a challenging encounter with McEnroe in the 1981 US Open and only reaching the quarterfinals in Monte Carlo the following year, Borg felt a shift. Tennis, the game he loved, began to lose its spark. Age just 26, Borg whispered words that would echo loudly across the tennis world. Tennis was no longer fun. Though it took him until February 1983 to share this feeling publicly, he confessed the absence of joy in the game. He said, when you go out on the court, you should say this is great. If you don't think and feel that, it's very difficult to play. While the curtain may have come down on Borg's time on the court, the echoes of his influence resonated far and wide. His mark was not just left in record books, but in the very heartbeat of tennis. But Borg's legacy wasn't confined to the court. Off the court, the man became a brand. Beyond the backhands and the baseline rallies, Borg dived into the world of business. He also started a clothing brand that became pretty popular in Europe. Although it faced challenges, it showcased Borg's versatility. Sweden, his homeland, reaped the benefits of his influence. Tennis clubs saw a surge in memberships, with kids wanting to be the next Borg. His contributions to tennis development in Sweden are evident in the Swedish champions that followed in his footsteps. And in the hushed corridors of tennis arenas and the buzzing tennis forums online, Borg's name is spoken with deep respect. For fans, players, and pundits, he remains an enduring symbol of excellence and determination. Bjorn Borg's journey from the courts of Sweden to the pinnacle of tennis history stands as a beacon for all who dare to dream big. His story, a testament to talent, grit, and resilience, teaches us that true legends never really retire. Their legacy continues to inspire and guide. As we reflect on the immortality of Borg's story, we invite you to share it with the world. Let his tale be a beacon for others to find their own path to greatness. Like, comment, and subscribe for more such inspirational journeys.